Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure space. And we are coming at you live from beautiful downtown Austin, Texas, for Data Cloud USA Metro Connect. We're in the, the capital of Texas. We're keeping it weird here in Austin. And I am here with a member of the Data Cloud Talent in Tech program, Mr. Emmanuel Ikpesu. Emmanuel is the research, as a research assistant, PhD student, yeah. PhD yeah. student at the University of Texas at Austin. Welcome. Did I get that right, Emmanuel? <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome. Great. Yeah. Great. So Emmanuel, let's talk about the digital infrastructure industry and specifically why you're here. What is it about the industry that made you think, you know what, that's something I want to be a part of? Yeah. So for me, I kind of have a background in engineering as well as computational engineering. So this means like in my PhD as well as my previous job, mm -hmm. I had to like do a lot of advanced computing that generates generous amount of data. So oh, yeah. it's like storing data, it's a huge thing. So at some point I got curious to like, oh, why not know more about how this is being done? Yeah. Because like for my past role, which I would say, shout out to my director then at AB InBev. Shout out. Yeah. It was a lot of demands, but it made me learn a lot. So like that role, I kind of like optimize a data process in terms of like my pipelines that we moved from like spending 10 hours for refresh time to like five minutes. Yeah, yeah, that was actually awesome. So it's like I got exposed to the cloud too much that now uh -huh. I want to know everything about the cloud. This industry needs more people <laughs> like you, Emmanuel, because there's a lot to know. And and honestly, there's a there's a lot to make better. Um, but if if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm you from like five years ago and I come to you and I say, Emmanuel, I'm thinking about going into the digital infrastructure space. Um, what do you think I, I need to know? What's most important for me to know right now to determine whether or not it'd be a good fit for me? Yeah, I think when it comes to that, it's like if I were to go back five years time, I would actually follow like three strategic st structure on how to do, which is the first one would be more like fundamental technical skills mm -hmm. because you can't really do much if you don't know what you want to work with True. which i call yeah. the what yeah 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 so it's like how do i what is the cloud about in the first place so i would more of pick one of these tools gcp aws or azure learn how to how do i spin a vm how do i create a storage containers how do i use docker how do i build pipelines that would be my okay. first approach knowing the technical side then the next thing is more like system level thinking yeah, so to know how to build VM is yeah. one, but to know how to build VM in an optimal way, it's a different level skill. Like I highlighted in my previous job was yeah. like, I came in there to an existing project that took 10 hours, but I was able to move from 10 hours refresh time to like five minutes. And we're doing real time analysis afterwards. Wow. So it's like, you need to know the trade-off between cost and efficiency, latency and throttling. So like that, I will end that there. Then I would say the final one has to do more with like the business alignment. Uh -huh. Because even now I'm doing a PhD and many persons were like, oh, you're doing a PhD, we end up being a professor. Come on. <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> so I feel you can actually make money from reading a PhD. Yeah. It's just more about how you see things. You learn how to get knowledge to make more money. So it's like... Now you know how to optimize these things. Now you yeah. know how to optimize it to align with your business needs. So not just on profit level, also on environmental sustainability. Yeah, because like when I use spin-off cloud VM, I pay attention to like, oh, this actually says they save CO2 on this data center. Why not use this? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, you're you're segueing into my next question better than I ever could. If if you're gonna predict what, what are the things that you most want to see with regard to uh, the industry around sustainability and innovation? What are those things? Yeah, so for sustainability innovation, I would say right now it's like people make sustainability different from innovation. But for me, in 10 years' time, I would actually want to see a system where sustainability is not independent, but it's more coexisting with like innovation yeah so for the sustainability aspect it's like now it's like for many data centers people are more focused on like oh how much energy are we saving in terms of energy efficiency but i think there is less attention to things like 
cooling. Yeah. Like how much water are we spend because yes. that's actually product. So yeah. it's like people considering both the material aspect as well as the energy aspect would actually be a big deal. Then for me in my PhD right now, it's like I'm doing something relatively new, yeah. which I'm doing a lot of advanced computing. And I spoke with my professor like, oh, I have a GPU. Why am I not doing parallel computing on my GPU? And he's like, oh, <laughs> for now, the models we're using... You're like, we can do this better right yeah, now. Yeah, but <laughs> models we're using work just on CPU because now it's like, I wait 10 minutes for every run. Yeah. So it's like, if we move more, like start thinking of, oh, can we actually develop chips that would process particular kind of solution efficiently? That would actually stand out for the innovation aspect. But ultimately... I view 10 years to be a system where sustainability is not integrated, but it's more of like a fundamental principle for innovation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love that <clears throat> Excuse me, so much because it's like, you're, what you're saying is it's like sustainability should be an ingredient in baking the cake. Yeah. It shouldn't be something else. Yeah. It should be a part of the ingredient. Yeah. I love that, Emmanuel. Thank you. Yeah. You're okay. welcome. Thanks yeah. for the opportunity. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. We will see you real soon.